On the show today, we're discussing the drug abuse crisis in Nigeria. As always, you can join the conversation with the hashtag Beyond Market. You can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther Ubudaga. Now, the growing incidences of substance abuse in Nigeria has become a national crisis. So many are concerned about the factors that have led to the trend and how it can be stopped. Dr. Stella Okoli, Group Managing Director, Emzo Pharmaceuticals Limited, joins me now for this discussion. Doctor, thank you so much. Pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank now, you when, very much. When this, the codeine crisis, uh, the, the, the sheer scale of it, codeine, other drugs like tramadol, came to the fore, and more, even more shocking, the easy access, how, how easy it was to access these drugs, despite the fact that it's actually regulated. What came to your mind? What was the first thing that crossed your mind? Actually, I was quite alarmed, you know, at the, um, you know, level. And also, I thought that we could have done more work to really ascertain what exactly happened, was the truth and was not. And that, uh, you know, our regulatory agencies, obviously, have been, you know, talking about it, actually, before this news broke and we've been having conversations with them. And uh, the BBC News, we gathered later, uh, what premiered a week before it broke. They showed it to journalists in Lagos, in different hotels, a week before it broke. What is the purpose of that? We got a letter from BBC saying that our uh, uh, sales representative was involved in illicit distribution of codeine. It was very strong. We wrote back and said, your letter number one is unsigned. Could we please understand who, how can we know more? We were denied that. While we were denied that, the Premier was going on all over, you know, uh, you know, Ni Nigeria, and we know about Lagos. So, we are alarmed because we have zero tolerance to malpractices, to abuse of codeine. Codeine, as you know, is a legitimate uh, pharmaceutical product for some elements you know, taking care of elements. For it to be a product of abuse is very worrisome. And obviously has to be controlled. But I, I, I imagine you can see why it would be, uh, why there would be access. Because first of all, and ironically, it's regulated. Because I remember, I mean, in 2017, the House of Reps did, you know, ask NAVDAC to you know, make it stop it, stop it from being an over-the-counter drug without, uh, at least without a prescription. And now we understand that what, what we hear now is that there's actually a, an organized drug syndicate that deals in codeine, in the sale of codeine to drug addicts. And it's quite interesting that Emzo Pharmaceuticals was also named. Uh, you, you, you say that uh, your, your sales reps could not have been engaged in that. Is it possible? I did not say okay. that my sales rep could not have been engaged. Because the moment we got that letter, we asked him to come to the office. Your letter is linked to this. What is it all about? And after some you know, time, he said he sold one carton, which is 60 bottles of codeine, to a friend in a hotel. We immediately put him on suspension. And it's not until the following morning that we now saw the, uh, I don't know, that's a material, you know, that was put up for the whole day, connecting Enzo with illegal, uh, you know, trade of, um, you know, codeine. Okay. And we tried to get him back. Till today, we don't know where he is. Okay, so have you put We reported have you... it immediately to the police that same day. He came, you know, and um, this uh, rep, the, what the BBC quoted was actually the, um, the batch number 
actual badge number that was allocated to him officially. 14 cattles to go and distribute to the pharmacies that are far away in Ota. Because Ota is far, you know. So if he had been involved with illegal trade, if he was coerced into it, we don't know. Okay. We don't know. Okay, so let, let's move on. Now, the conversation has pointed to, or this incident has pointed to leakages in Nigeria's pharmaceutical, I mean, pharmaceutical industry uh, regulation. Uh, NAFDAQ has been named, because the question now becomes who dropped the ball? If codeine is a regulated drug, how is it that this access to it is so easy? How is it that there's been, there is a syndicate that deals in large amounts, very large amounts of this drug? So what are your thoughts in terms of how the regulation of this drug and how we can begin to plug it's been banned now, at least the, the, the ingredient itself, codeine, you know, in the use of uh, cough syrups. But let's just speak to that point first. Regulation, what sh how can we begin to close these gaps to ensure that, because there are other substances, there's also tramadol, you know, that's also being abused right now. How can we begin to close those gaps? Um, to close a gap of something as bad as a crime, because drug abuse is a crime, and whether you say the illicit supplies or whatever, you know, all stakeholders must come together. And they have to x-ray the impact, the reach, the reasons. Government have their role to play, and, uh, you know, um, regulate the regulatory authorities have their role to play, the industry have their role to play. And the whole of the pharma industry, whether you're manufacturing or you're importing, have a big role to play. So all of, and you know, schools have a big role to play. Parents have a big role to play. Because you don't just start abusing drugs. Many people are not abusing any drug. So we must get our youth to understand that they have a future. We must get our youth to understand that they are loved and they belong to Nigeria and they're indeed our future and our hope. Okay, let me take you back to how it all started. In the, I'm trying to understand how, I mean, paint the scenario in my head, how it starts from somebody walking into a pharmacy and asking for a cough syrup that contains codeine and perhaps does not have a prescription and he's, you know, he's giving that drug. Because I know that as a pharmacist council of Nigeria, they also have surveillance activities going from one pharmacy to the other. I don't know what, I mean, what the capa capacity is in terms of you know, manpower, skills, or you know, mm. feed, actual feed on the ground to go into, because there's so many pharmacies. Sometimes I wonder, on just one street, you see almost 20, 50, and you wonder, do they all have licenses in the first place? <clears throat> but that's another conversation. So I want you to help me paint the scenario, you know, paint out that scenario, how it can happen that somebody can walk in and not just one visit to the pharmacy, he goes a couple of hours, he comes back, he gets access to the same co codeine containing uh, cough syrup, and then it continues the following day. The cough syrup with codeine is actually a product that you can buy off the shelf in a real pharmacy that has a pharmacist. In England, I used to work for um, Boots the Chemist. People come and buy. Because we have pharmacists at the back. And they, you give them a bottle, two teaspoons. You must stick to those age of any pharmaceuticals you're taking. You, this is why you must stick to it. So in Nigeria, they have not quite put it under prescription. But the truth of the matter really is, when you go to hospitals, the doctors, are they prescribing as they should? Even in the retail? But that comes with a prescription. I'm talking about pharmacists, chemists, in quotes, that you, one walks into and whether, sometimes there's a pharmacist, sometimes there isn't a pharmacist, just one guy, one lady sitting there, you know, manning the entire shop that's just a few square meters, you know, wide, and it's just, and says, okay, fine, you want cough or you want, you want cough syrup or codeine, 
here it is, no prescription, no questions asked. If somebody has a cough and needs uh, uh, cough syrup with codeine um, and buys one bottle, then it's not a big deal, as I've said, because there's a clear dosage of two, five mil. The problem is not that people are going to pharmacy and buying one bottle. What we heard is that two states in Nigeria were consuming three million bottles a day. The question is, where are they getting it from? Because codeine powder is regulated. Nigeria has its own quota, which has been going down over the years, like most countries. You know, so what we make in the whole year is only a fraction of what they say they, some two states are consuming in a day. So that's why I thought that more work is to be done. Do you think it's been extra, it's been illegally imported in, into the country? Because if Nigeria has a quota, then where is the, ex, the extra coming from? What I think is no one has done proper job. We have not even checked how many anybody is consuming. Where is the statistics be, you know? behind those, because if the statistics are accurate and they show that people are taking uh, three million a day, it's serious. You don't believe that number? You don't think it's possible that we could have up to three <laughs> you know, million in one? If I were, uh, yes, no. I think that a senior BBC um, uh, um, should have done this. And they, you know, they have five months, we understand. They didn't go, we have 28 uh, companies that are, you know, giving a, a license for codeine. 28 pharmaceutical manufacturing companies. You know, they didn't go to them. They didn't come to us. They went to a salesman, a salesman who had codeine. How they got him, what transpired, we do not know. So there are so many questions to be answered. The people that are quoting three million, if it is three million, it's very serious. Then I can now take you back to your own question. Where are they coming from? Because by the time we ascertain the number, what they're taking, you know, we can begin to solve that problem. But if we exaggerate things, and you know, we are just uh, you know not following method. We need a method of nipping this in the board or managing those that are affected because I have seen a lot of addicts that have been weaned off through so many you know ways. Okay, Doctor, we're going to take a quick break, but I just want to, just one quick question before the break. I know NAVDAC was asked to create a central database where prescription data could be logged to help detect addicts or those who are abusing their prescriptions. Do we have that data? Is that, does it exist now, or that's just a recommendation right now? I would say that it's a recommendation. Maybe they're working hard on it. Because we are meeting and uh, interacting, the stakeholders are interacting with NAVDAC, and we are, have offered our assistance in any way we could. All right, we'll take a quick break. Dr. Thank Hold that thought for us. Thank you for your time so far. I've been speaking to you, Dr. Stella Okoli, Group Managing Director, Emzo Pharmaceuticals Limited. Still with me in the studio is Dr. Stella Okoli, Group Managing Director, Emzo Pharmaceuticals. We'll continue our discussion on drug abuse in Nigeria. Doctor, thank you for your time so far. Now, let's we're thank still you. on the codeine. The government has, federal government has banned it now as an input in the, the creation or the production of cough syrup and it's been replaced with dextrometopan. I think, I hope I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> so what does that mean for pharmaceutical companies in the country? Is it, uh, is it, does it cost more? And the ingredient itself, is it just as effective and less addictive? The government, the minister, actually made the statement that codeine is banned. Then we were still at a meeting with NAVDAC when that was announced. And uh, we had a meeting last week, and um, what is being said is that it's regulated. So they have to sort it out, because minister used the word, the 
DG NADAC and the rest of the industry say it's a regulated. It's a regulated substance. So, and at that meeting, I think it was a, agreed broadly how their regulation will, you know, be done. As you are aware, uh, we as a whole in Nigeria have to take things very seriously. And um, we in the industry, especially in terms of pharmaceutical industry, we are determined to assist our regulators succeed because we are in the business of promoting healthy living. But are you also, I mean, the pharmaceutical community, are you also taking ownership, some you know, part in this? Because, uh, I mean, these, this is a product that you use to make other products, to make a cough syrup, and f somehow it's fallen into, or people have begun to abuse it, and of course also the incidence of it getting out into the wrong hands directly from some of the factories. So uh, as the pharmaceutical community player or practitioners, do you also take ownership of this problem? We condemn in all in that a transacting coding business from premises. That's very unethical, and we condemn it. The, as I told you, the ownership we can really, I don't see the ownership we got. The only thing is to join hands and make sure that this is curbed. Any uh, um, organization, agencies that are very, very serious, coordinated in fighting the menace, we will, you know. Okay. Because Nigeria, as you know, people tend to get away with things they're not supposed to get away with. And when there's problem, everybody starts running around in a circle. Okay, so how do we ensure that? I mean, if we're, we're talking about gaps in the law, gaps in regulation, that's why <clears throat> we're still talking about the issue of regulation. How do we fix things? You've said that the federal government has said it's banned, mm -hmm. that NAVDAC says it's being regulated. So if it's being regulated, I mean, those are two different, completely two different things. But if we say that it's being regulated now, is it regulation with stricter controls now? Like the database I, I mentioned, because if we say regulate, it was reg it's been regulated, but people is falling into the wrong hands. So what's different? Mm. What will be different now? Uh, is what the, it was said is that they were under their control. That means that I should think, if you produce one bottle, they have to record it. You really said it all by saying database. It's important to develop a very good database, even for drugs that are coming into the country. Even for all the ones that are produced, those that are coming into the country, through the borders. Okay, so if, I mean, if, I mean, I'm thinking another way could be in each individual farm, uh, uh, pharmaceutical company like EMSO, you have a number of uh, products that come in or amount yes. of codeine. Isn't, can the NAVDAC now go into or to every one of those companies and say, Let's, let me have your data, let me have the records of, you know, codeine that you've received that, have, that has been imported. And I'm thinking, isn't that a, one way to collate and at least have a very good idea of how much is coming in? And yes. so you know what's come through the back door. Yeah, the codeine is regulated. NADAC issues us license to import. Okay. When we import this, they come and check it and before we're allowed to check it. So they have the data. They have the data, and it should be in their database. So if we look at that data, and then we now look at the fact that it's been said that three million bottles are consumed mm. a day, is that what you're saying, that there's a missing link, that it's, there's, it's doubtful? That it's very doubtful. <laughs> that it could be up to if three million. there is three million, we have to look outside the industry okay. as well. We have to look you know, outside the industry, and then check uh, our borders, vote air, see is anyone bringing anything, and people have not been able to, you know, find out. Okay, so going forward, do you think that we're going to see that change now? 
I mean, obviously, it's come to light and it's, you know, it's quite uh, worrisome and quite embarrassing, if I if I must also add that. Mm -hmm. At least we know how much is coming to you, how, what the quantity that pharmaceutical companies uh, import. But I'm also thinking, like I said earlier, what's going to be different now? The regulation, as in stricter controls. What is it that NAPDAC is telling you will be different now? NAPDAC is telling there will be, you know, there will be stricter control. That's, That's what they're saying. Uh, and uh, the meeting is ongoing. Industry, obviously, is going to engage um, you know, them and make sure, make suggestions. Okay. At the end of the day, they are the regulators. We can force them, but we can help them. Okay, what about the grassroots level? Because I, I, I imagine there's still some pharmacists, of, uh, or pharmacies across the nation that still have the codeine containing uh, cough syrups, or I don't know, or also tramadol. So what's going to happen to those supplies? Uh, would the Pharmacies uh, Council of Nigeria go into those pharmacies and say, okay, you know, let's run everything up. What's going to happen to those stockpiles? If there are substantial quantities in the chemist shops, substantial, then they could. But it's been it banned or officially banned, at least at the federal, <coughs> what we hear from the federal government. So would it make, would that, does that mean that it's now illegal for those who still have it? And someone walks into that chemist and says, I want a cough syrup that contains codeine, but it's been banned. So I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that, I mean, I imagine that those, you're saying that if they're in substantial quantities, I'm thinking that it's been banned already, so shouldn't they all be rounded up? Mm, it's been banned. Then I go to England, I buy one bottle. I come back. I, I think that, you see, there has been a lot of panic. You know, somebody just shows a video, we don't know the motive, we don't know anything. But do you, but do you agree that we have a coding problem in Nigeria? Yes, we have a coding, abused, yes we do. Whether or not it's three million bottles, but we do have a good We a do good have, problem. and we do have. In fact, since that news broke, I was shocked to find out the level of abuse of other substances. If my little people around me are telling me, they sniff this, I say, what? The, you know, they sniff that, there's abuse. Codeine, tramadol, and many more. And most worrisome is that they are even abusing, they say it's gum. Yeah, we've heard that uh, gum glue, and yeah. what, glue, and uh, all sorts of things. But how bad is the tramadol abuse? And I know tram tramadol, that's a painkiller. Yes, we are told that tramadol is worse. It's much, much worse. In fact, that's what the PS, PSM president said at the meeting, that they should be even be talking about tramadol. Not more at, than yes. Uh, in equal. At the end of the day, you don't know which one is which. Tramadol is also a prescription drug. Yes. And it's regulated. Is it regulated too? Uh, yeah. Mm. Okay, so what is the pharmaceutical, I mean, what, as a regulator, uh, I mean, as a player, regulators, uh, as you, you've come together to discuss is what is also being done about that? About the abuse, it's to find Tramadol. ways. Well, Tramadol. <laughs> NABDAC has now been given access to the ports. Okay. You know, I think that is the thing that they announced. And uh, hopefully, you know, they will be able to stop those containers from entry. Hopefully. Also, they should get access to you know, uh, uh, the air port, and hopefully they should be able to, you know, um, abound those that are coming by air. The ones that are coming through borders and all that, I believe both immigration, custom, I don't know if the government is going to set up a tax. I don't get the sense that you you are confident in the capability of the regulators to I don't know maybe from a point of view of capacity, uh, personnel, maybe even funding, to you know face tackle this task head on. Mm. At the last meeting we held with DG Nandak, um, I was telling her that they should ask for more funding. One of the things she said is that they don't have vehicles to work. And I said that we in the industry can advocate for another to have vehicles. You don't have vehicles, 
you know, how are you going to do it? It is a surveillance body. How would they yeah. going to do their work if they don't have You understand. So we, we're there to, you know, partner with them and be sh make sure that, you know, they, they are equ equipped to do their job. So, you say, did you say I'm not confident? No, you, you don't sound, um, well, I, 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 I get a sense <laughs> that you have doubts, as it were. That uh, to, uh, to the extent at which um, to which NAFTA or the regulators, all those uh, involved, especially the regulators, to combat this problem. And I imagine why you would feel so, because like you said, if one just talked, uh, thinks about the uh, level of funding uh, that comes to a body like NAFTA, one can you know have such doubts. But going, but it's we are dealing with a real problem here that's on our hands, mm -hmm. and whether or not NAFTA is well equipped. Uh, I mean, it's, that's unfortunate, but we have a problem on our hands, and whether or not we like it, we have to tackle that problem. Mm -hmm. So, but you've, you've, you've said uh, your complementary, your complementing efforts of the body like NAVDAC to help uh, mm -hmm. uh, address this scourge. But going forward, are you, are you confident that we can begin to, we'll begin to see a reduction? Hopefully we'll get that database up and running, and so we can see what the numbers, you know, mm -hmm. are, as, mm -hmm. they are, as they truly are. But, you know, I'm just saying, as an industry player going forward, are you hoping to see those numbers come down? Yes, I'm hoping to see them come down. Would you be surprised but if they don't? Be... I will take it this way. Many people do not know, many young people, that codeine is addictive. What has happened is that the documentary has told every little young, young people that you can take codeine. So we have to start advocacy in the schools, in the universities, to ensure that they don't even start their own. You understand? So, and to condemn it and to make sure that they, you know, they're motivated okay. to do their work, to learn, to become some, okay. you know, and to create jobs for them. They, we have to give them hope. Okay. That, that is what we're, you know, um, we have a foundation. Okay, Dr. Kale, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave there. We're actually out of time. But thank oh, you're you so out much. of time, man. Thank, thank you so much for talking to us today. We appreciate but you're going being... to edit it, so you have to add this last one. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. <laughs> that was Dr. Stella Kole, Group Managing Director, EMSA Pharmaceuticals Limited, looking at Nigeria's drug abuse problem.